I'm going to use Festool's plexiglass router fence to plow out the bottom of this door so I can slip a plug in it real easy. This is one of the coolest little accessories that you can get for one of uh, Festool's larger routers. I'm going to mount it here onto the 22. And all I've got to do to mount this is to thread two screws through the router fence into the base of the 2200 router. And that is enough to secure it. I'll drop the base down so I can see the bit really well. So now all I have to do is slide the fence right up against the bit here, or as close as I want to get it, about a sixteenth of an inch away, fat sixteenth so I don't nick the skin on the door, and tighten down these knobs here, one at the front, one at the back. And then once I get it on the door, I can adjust this fence on this side, and slide it up too. Just loosen up the knobs on the front and the back here and slide it up until the whole fence is snug on the door. I could actually check that right now with the plug that I cut off the door and adjust that fence so it's just perfect before I put it on the door. Here's my test cut right here. And it comes right up against the back of the skin on the fiberglass. Because what I want to do is remove all of this foam, all the polyurethane, polyurethane foam through here, but on both sides. So what I'll do is I'll run the router down this side of the door first, and then I'll flip it upside down and run it down this side of the door. And that'll cut two half inch grooves right alongside the skin. And then I can remove the rest of that foam by hand. Here's the cut I'm talking about. Here's the plow I made with the router right up against the skin on the top side face of the door. I'm going to make that deeper, about an inch, so I can put in a good three-quarter, seven-eighths inch thick filler in here. Sometimes you can't do anything right unless you have just the right clamp. I'm using Bessie's dual clamp here. These are the most awesome squeeze grip clamps I've used. They're, you know, one-handed, you just squeeze them tight. The reason I like them is because they have such deep jaws on one side, and then they have a regular shallow jaw on the other. But I can take that deeper jaw and stretch all the way across from the rung on my door bench here to the top of the door. If I didn't have this door clamped in here like this, really securely, it would slide around when I was moving that plunge router, and that plunge router might come out of that door and nick right through the face of that skin. And the other thing I like about these clamps is they always grip. They never slip. You can keep choking them down with the handle here, and you get tighter and tighter and tighter. And that is that. I don't know how you might have done this. I know a few years ago before I had a Festool 2200 router and this awesome guide, the fence that attaches to the bottom of the router, I used to do this with a homemade jig and it was a lot of sweating, agonizing, high tension work. It didn't have a fence on both sides of the door to trap the router and the bit inside the door. This not only has a dual fence that's easy to adjust with the knobs on the back side, but you can see through the top of it because it's clear. So it's really easy to center the fences on both sides of the router bit. Those clamps made quick work of that, too. I'll leave these things on here overnight, and tomorrow morning I'll be able to hang this door. This is the bottom of the door that I cut off yesterday 
with my Festool saw and guide rail. And if you look at this, you'll notice that this door has a composite bottom rail. In fact, all the rails and all the styles on a Plast Pro door are made out of composite material, not wood, which is nice because they won't absorb moisture, they won't rot, insects don't like them, they'll last forever. The door won't check, crack, twist, buckle, do anything. That's what's so nice about fiberglass doors. But you don't get full composite uh, rails and styles and a lot of other fiberglass doors. So be careful which ones you buy. Shop around carefully. And the other thing that's really cool about a Plaspro door is, look at the inside of this. There's a continuous lock block inside of every one of these doors. It runs all the way up both styles. The nice thing about that continuous lock block is you can put any kind of lock into these doors, anything. A handle set with a wide spread or a deadbolt and lock set like I've done here, and it'll have plenty of backing for screws and mounting hardware. That's the only wood that's in these doors, the continuous LVL lock block. And that's not going to give you any problems with moisture either because it's LVL. It's impregnated with resin. Just remember, if you're going to cut an inch and a half off the bottom of a Plast Pro door, or probably any manufactured door, you're going to avoid the warranty on the door. So do a really good job. I used a piece of Versatex PVC for the plug on the bottom of this door. I didn't have a piece of composite decking around, but I did have plenty of Versatex. And this material will make an ideal plug for the bottom of the door. It's impervious to moisture. It won't rot, it won't twist, it won't check, it won't absorb anything. I secured that filler with PL Premium because it'll adhere to almost anything. It'll stick really good to the polyurethane core inside the door. It'll adhere to the PVC plug I'm installing, and it'll adhere to the fiberglass skin on the back side of this door, too. Now, we can pull all these clamps off this door. And look, it's a nice, tight, snug fit, and it's sealed completely with that PL Premium adhesive. All I have to do is pull this tape off that we put on to protect the door from the adhesive. And I'm ready to hang this door up. Oh, thanks for your help. So, I got my door up. I just got the door shoe on it. It locks and it latches. And it's cut off at exactly the right elevation. I'm kind of a stickler for details, being a Finnish carpenter. I wanted to be sure that the top of this door was level with the mill guard doors and windows I installed on the rest of the shop, and those units are lower. They come in at about 80 and a half inches in height, and that's why I ended up having to cut an inch and a half off the bottom of this Plast Pro door.